Okay, okay. Nick Swan now. Puts the key down. 13th in the championship. The takeover happened, as I said it would. People will be... Oh, when, when have we got leads? Now then, people, welcome back to the Just Joe Football Show. And time for a new video, a new addition to the Late Night Leads. Uh, it is the scouting report. And tonight we're going to be starting with goalkeepers and defenders. Um, and, a, and a new addition as well, if you like, to uh, the Late Night Leads. We have, of course, Lockie, who's going to be joining us on a, on a more regular basis now, which I'm very, very happy about. Uh, for those that will be uh, not on social media and will have seen my post on YouTube that said, I won't be coming live, I need a rest. And for everyone who said to me, <laughs> you deserve it, Joe. Enjoy your rest. I'm sorry. Um, I've been up and down like a yo-yo. I was at work. It was busy again. I had my break. I had... Um, I, I basically drank a, a monster to try and give me a boost and it had the adverse effect i was like sat at my desk like this i was thinking what's going on i need to sleep um and then um yeah that settled down i had some uh, chocolate um some like solid sugar and it sort of gave me a boost and i was like you know what i don't want to keep the viewers waiting i don't want to keep myself waiting because i'm really looking forward to this video and this series um so let us know uh, in the comments um if you're hyped for it as well please do smash a like on the video as always make sure you check out Lockie's channel as well and of course um make sure you check out andrea on on twitter listen it's been an eventful day before we get stuck into it um how excited have you been today, folks? Seeing the seeing the players on the pitch. There's been some beautiful images uh, yes. put together by by the club and seeing um, Daniel Farker, um, you know, getting a, uh, getting amongst the the lads. And uh, it's um, yes, yeah, it's, it's got really proper me excited, man. I can't mm -hmm. lie to you. What about you, Lockie? Is it is it? Really oh yeah, you? yeah. I love it. I love it. Yeah. You know, it's been it's been so long, and just to see them happy and smiling and. Yeah. That, that that era that you know it's a, it's a new start a new dawn kind of thing yeah. fact you know the squatting one where he's squatting you know yeah yeah yeah, yeah. i love it so, yeah <laughs> it's it's, yeah no, i'm just looking forward to it tomorrow now, i know yeah. some people don't like the training footage because it's i guess it's propaganda but i love it mate i think it's brilliant yeah same here yeah. same uh, i'm all yeah, about it what about good. you andre yeah it's good it's good to see the players again and uh apart from that you know we have we, we have seen who will be involved in this, um, that they're, they're invited in groups, you know, because mm -hmm. in one of the images you, you you could have spotted that there was another group in the other pitch, you know, behind them. So that's why they're showing certain players uh, because they're splitting groups right now. But yeah, it it, it, it pumps up, it pumps us up, and seeing uh, Farke uh, touring uh, and speaking individually with all the players, even Archie mm -hmm. Gray, the youngsters, yeah. mm -hmm. it's a good start, you know. Yeah. He, he get to know, he, he will get to know them in the, during this week. Yeah, mm -hmm. this was one of my favourite images. To be honest, was seeing Daniel yeah. Farker with Matteo Joseph and Gio Rutter, and uh, it just got me excited because I'm convinced I have convinced myself that he's going to have an absolutely unreal uh, season. Uh, there were some others, obviously, they're having a good uh, chinwag with with Luke Aylin. I know that Illinois people, but Luke Aylin is one of the elder statesmen, one of the experienced pros, has gotten out of this division before. So he's a good character. He's a good character, and uh, we need him around the place. Uh, there, just having a bit of crack with Sam Greenwood as well. It's nice to see smiles on faces. And there's, uh, you know, Cody Drama involved, which is, which is really, really positive. Darko JB there. Um, you've got Bamford, Aylin, Cooper leading. Uh, Sonny Perkins, Louis uh, Bates, yeah, Louis Bates, yeah, Louis Bates yeah. was involved as well. Where's oh yeah, Jan Pavedi, you've got <laughs> Jeremiah Mullen. Um, I think Shackleton too. Uh, in, in one of the videos, I spotted him. Is that right? Okay, I think that yeah. might be Pascal. Who Andrea? A lot of people said you look like the young Pascal, and I can see it. You know, <laughs> I, I can see, see that, it. Um, I can definitely see it. But listen, that was it, and it gets me excited. But we're here to 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 talk about you know, the scouting mission, if you like. We've called it the scouting report. Um, and we're going to be looking at potential players that Leeds United could look at to 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 help bolster out the squad. Uh, we're going to see uh, a lot of exits that we know, um, but we're also going to see a lot of incomings. I did a video this morning just talking about the press conference uh, and also touched on the YEP article, basically saying that 
he's going to have a bit of a war chest. He's going to have money to spend. Um, and I think for me, that was music to my ears. So we are going to see uh, players come in for sure. So um, what better way to 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 start than to, to have a look at the squad? And we're going to start tonight's episode with, with goalkeepers and defenders. Andrea's put together an exhaustive list. We've we've picked out probably the the more likely or better players that we feel that we, we should go go with and, and we'll have a chat about them. But Andrea, do you wanna do you wanna start us off? Let's uh, let's go to the to the goalkeeper. The goalkeepers, yeah. yeah. Uh, of course. I try to focus on the, the type of goalkeepers that can suit the, the style of play, of course. Uh Fark has always had goalkeepers that were involved in the in the build up play that can play with the ball with the, in, in the feed and me a part of the build up too. Because of course we know that when we when the, the um, team attacks, the fullbacks try to follow the play, and the two centre backs stay back with uh, the option of the pass by the goalkeeper. To there were always we we've seen team through in the past, but Jonas Somlin too and Gladbach this season. The, 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 these were two goalkeepers, uh, tall, commanding, and uh, they could play with the ball on on their feet. Cruel less than the normally yeah. obviously, but uh, yeah, it was good and commanding from the back. So, uh, I try to focus on on two main characters, which are at this who are at this, uh, at this stage, Carl Darlo and uh, Stoma Strakosha from Brentford. But the other names that we can talk about later, maybe after we we, we discuss this these main two, are in my opinion, Preston, Freddie Woodman, Kimen Keller from Liverpool, Anthony Patterson from Sunderland. Gagas Lonina, alone from Chelsea, of course, it's a different option because mm-hmm. there's two, uh, you know, school of thinking. A experienced goalkeeper with experience in the league, or mm-hmm. a young one coming through, like Patterson, for example, or Woodman, yeah. and a young player on loan, maybe like Lonina. Sam Johnston is another one that is, has been mentioned in the past, of course, but um, you know, I think a club like you, Luton, will, will take a look at him. Honestly, I said Strakosha. Another loan can be Svila for Roma. Another player, Cranio from Monza, not playing this season. He was he was in the midst of a, the Italian national team, but he hasn't played because Di Gregorio is playing ahead of him. Then the other players are just going through the names before we, we talk about Darlo. Vasilis Barkas, you may, you may remember him. He didn't have a good time at Celtic, but he smashed it at Utrecht this season. Good goalkeeper between the sticks. Daniel Perez is having has had a good Euro. Played against England too with Israel. Good player, good goalkeeper, young. Uh, Maccabi Tel Aviv. You know, the another name that's been mentioned in the past is Victor Jansson from Rotterdam. I think he's a good goalkeeper too. And uh, looking at the loan market too, Zach Steffen was over at Bor yeah. last season, was a good yeah. keeper. So mm-hmm. I think he's closed right now at Man City. So uh, they may look to loan him out again or, uh, you know, looking for a permanent deal. The last name I put in the list is actually Andri Snopper. You may remember him because he was uh, the starter for the Netherlands, played for Arenven in the Eredivisie, very tall goalkeeper too. They share the same characteristics, all this keeper. He was very good, but he's playing in Arenven and he's lost his starting, uh, his starting place in the Netherlands, of course, because he's playing in a lower club. But looking at his age too, he, he, he may be a good uh, player for the championship too. Um, okay, so let's focus on Darlo. Of yeah. course, Dalo, 32 years of age. The first thing that comes to my mind, I think that comes to my attention is it's six foot three, you know, mm-hmm. 1.90 meters of eight, of eight, you know, and 79 kilo, kilograms of, of weight, you know. Of course, he's been a product of the academies of uh, Villain Forest. Mm-hmm. But looking at this play, you know, I like him because he's his weeper keeper. He comes out for crosses. He takes part in the action, like I said, especially when the fullbacks go. Mm-hmm. advance and uh, higher the position of course and he cooperates with the the cbs of course uh, i think he had a good season when he they got promoted with uh, newcastle newcastle yeah of course yeah because uh, and especially if you look at his pedigree he's the keeper that has already played in the past multiple times in the championship mm-hmm. with forest mm-hmm. uh, gaining a, a move to newcastle when they were in the premier league they, they got yeah. relegated it wasn't the first choice when they got relegated and then became the first choice and they went straight back up with Benitez that season, and uh, yeah, the other other characteristics in my in my point of view, of course, is that I've seen some of the, of course, some clips, specific clips, and he often goes when he goes for the, with the long ball, 
he often goes for the wing, wingers and fullbacks. And we know with Farke, the, the wingers and fullbacks are the key part of his system. So with the keeper dialing him, passing from the back with the two centre backs staying behind, you can have the option to go with a long ball and get past the midfield, the opposition midfield with that long ball. So it's not the tall number nine, because of course Farke doesn't play with the tall number nine usually, of course. Mm-hmm. Usually not 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 it's not the uh, the Bible, you know, <laughs> in terms of football Bible that usually goes with the long balls to the wings and the and the full backs. Yeah, specifically. But if you look at this uh, loan spell that he had with all recently, because mm-hmm. he played 12 games with all CT, he uh, had f- against him 51 shots on target, he saved 36 of them. So it's uh, 75% of a shot saved. So it was, it, was, it, it was instrumental, you know, in the majority of the games, of course. Five clean sheets, of course, I'll, I'll, I'll add, add some problems at the back. Uh, this season, but if you look at the at the, at the keeper, of course, is sometimes he doesn't uh, block the ball. He's more like a spectacular keeper, you know, um, one that likes to to save to to get a rebound on the ball. You know, sometimes he needs to do, to in certain situation it's better to block the ball than rebound that. You know, he likes mm-hmm. to make spectacular save. That 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 may be a weakness in my point of view. But mm-hmm. if you look at this one-on-one record, even against proven strikers in the Premier League, he's very good. He's a commanding keeper. He's good with the ball with his feet. He's uh, one that comes out for crosses, and we've seen with Melia this season how crucial is that, because Melia often didn't get didn't get the right tempo, the right rhythm coming out for crosses and cost us sometimes. You remember, of course, the goal of Chimish Coleman. Against Everton, yeah, yeah. Positioning. Mm-hmm. but yeah, I think it, it might be a, a good fit, honestly. Just fit, and he's always played with the four, four, two, three, one. Okay, awesome. and I just like I don't know. Obviously, maybe you can you can um, can help me on this, but obviously this this percentile here is is his rating uh, amongst. Um, Players in his position uh, in in the next eight leagues uh, closest to uh, the current leagues that is in. You can see there he's he's comparable to the keepers on this list here. Um, so uh, Bachman at Watford, Ingram at Hull City, etc. So these are the players not that Pert. Are most... <laughs> huh? No, the the last one, not Pert. <laughs> No, but yeah, you mentioned him, right? You mentioned him exactly. Um, so quite comparable. But what's quite interesting is is uh, the amount of touches he has. Um, yep. In in terms, so like you were saying, it, it's like he's involved a lot in 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 the build up phase. I guess I'm not sure how Hull City play. I've not watched a lot of him under Liam Rossini, but but that's where he spent his last six months. And I guess w- when you look at that, he's, he's up there in the, in the, you know, top 99 um, or, or the highest percentage, if you like, of, of touches on the ball, um, you know, for players uh, in and around um, the leagues that he's in. So that's, I get, is that impressive? Is that the, the sort of things we, we should be looking at then in, t- in terms of a goalkeeper, someone that is good with the ball at his feet and, and, and like you say, can, can be involved in the build up. Yeah, for me, it's, it's a good start, of course. Uh, it, it shows that it's uh, 51 touches you know, per game. Uh, I found an understand that he said, he said uh, 43 passes per game and, and analyzed to the fact that he prefers to um, get short passes, you know, mm-hmm. uh, especially with, uh, with as an option with the centre-backs. And we've seen with Fark in the past, there's that viral clip when, when they played against Bournemouth now in Norwich, when they were all passing from the back. With, with the movement from the two players uh, right next to the one with the ball, of course. So he, he can prove a, a, like an option in terms of the build-up because he only does four long balls per game, honestly. But those four long balls, if you look at the solution when he, when he does it, is when the, um, the opposition presses up and he tries to find because, of course, they hide the position, the opposition, of course. And you can get past their, their pressing with the long ball to the winger or the fullback. So I think it, it might be a good a good fit in, in that term. And if you look at mm-hmm. his save, you know, also the, the 71 PS per, uh, per, per, per G, you know, I think it's a good start to 71%. Mm-hmm. Uh, this, this is the, the, the impact basically that, uh, um, you know, the, um, the crucial save that he made, especially when, he, when they had great, great chances, you know, 
and um, the, the, by the opposition. So I think it's a good one to uh, and cross his top the sixty five percent, especially. Mm. So it shows that it, it is a he is a keeper accustomed to the championship. Like I said, has experience in it. Uh, of course, will he be a, a good prem, a good Premier League keeper if he got promoted? I don't know, but it, uh, if you look at, at, at Burnley, they got promoted with Arjenet Muric, not a yeah. Premier League keeper. They got yeah, promoted, yeah. And, uh, and now they're bringing in uh, uh, Jim uh, Stafford yeah, for uh, City. Trafford, yeah, 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 and yeah. also Lawrence Viguru from Leighton Orin from League uh, from League Two uh, yeah. as a backup. So they probably loan out uh, Peacock Farrell. And uh, yeah, just show you that you have to have a championship keeper, not necessarily a keeper with a yeah. Premier League feature. You know, um, it's quite it's quite interesting as well. If we if we have a look at um, you know just this is Melier in comparison. Um, you know, last season, obviously, if you look at the amount of touches he had, I think the most touches Melly had were picking the ball out of the back of the net, right? Um, no. <laughs> I'm quite <Unfortunately>. surprised. <laughs> yeah, I'm quite surprised to see his uh, crosses stop so high, if I'm if I'm being totally honest. Um, there you go. But um, yeah, that's how he compares uh, to, to Melly. Lockyer, what are your what are your thoughts on, on Darlow? Because he's been, I guess, maybe... A lot of Leeds fans have looked at it and and and, and maybe not not really rated it as such as as yeah. really they should. I think. I don't think it's like you know it doesn't come across as that exciting type of goalkeeper because yeah. I think it is a known quantity at this yeah, level. Yeah. But I think it's a solid known quantity. And if we talk about fact system specifically, a lot of touches there which you can see, but the average length of the goal kicks is very short, which would suggest a lot of these touches came from short passes. Uh, again, I don't know how Hull played, but I believe they when um, they did bring in Rossini, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. I think they did play out from the back or they attempted certain times to play out from the back, I believe, uh -huh. once he came in. So you've got to look at stuff like that. And and for me, a, a key, and what, what Fark does in his system, if there isn't a ball on, what will happen is the fullbacks will split or at least one side will split. The centre-backs will come apart and it's, the CDM might be there for the ball. So you will have to make risky passes as well. So it's not just about being able to pass it to the guy next to you. It's about being able or being brave enough to actually, you know, make those risky yeah. passes. Um, so and does people it, like... Do, sorry, does that correlate then just to just to bring up this? Because I was quite like, if you look at the average length of his goal kicks, it's basically next to nothing, isn't it? Yeah. It's like they're going short all the time, I assume. Yeah. Is that, yeah. Is that the point? Yeah. I, I, no, I yeah. imagine so. And that's a bit from that's, the back. Jacob Gris, and, defender, yeah. They tried to yeah. play from the back. Yeah, and 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 under Fark, that's a and a thing a big thing about his system is that is almost all the time from the goal kick. It's mm -hmm. where can what there's several different ways to get out from the back. You know, he played to the centre back. One will either pass it, or, or another centre back will be a drive with it. They'll look for the full backs all the time, or they'll look for the spare man in midfield. But there's different ways, so a keeper has to be able to be comfortable with short passing, risky passing, even medium term passing to bypass the press if he has to. Um, so I think from what we can see here, as well as the fact he's experienced, his save percentage there is decent. Yeah. Um, his goals against is decent, you know, and crosses stopped in a system like Fax, where teams might struggle to break you down if we're a bit more defensively solid. Being able to come for crosses is also a decent turnaround. So mm. it looks good on paper and it looks like with his experience, it's probably a no-brainer in that sense yeah. for a good yeah. fee as well. Yeah. I think so. I think five million is quite cheap, and yeah. um, you know, um, yeah, I think it's a smart move. And um, like you say, he's, he's had experience. You know, mm -hmm. uh, he won he won this league with Rafa Benitez. You know, so I think that 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 can't be yeah. um, experience can't be under undervalued. Um, and and obviously, he's been at a big club like Newcastle. He's played games in the Premier League for Newcastle mm -hmm. as well. And yeah, you know, they they they're. Uh, they're a was very for, for choice one season for one yeah, season. Yeah, yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, Colin Kerwin says just before we move on to the next goalkeeper, he says, "Buzzing lads, thanks, Andrea, legendary scouting and leads in for Forza Farka, keeper the board. Yeah, <laughs> keeper the board. board. Yeah, keeper the board. Uh, for now, anyway. For now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you, Colin. Um, another another goalkeeper you've you've touched on um, is I'm I'm going to butcher his name. I'll give it a go. It's uh, Thomas Strakosha, who is uh, uh, Al Albanian, who um, yep. who who was born previously in Greece. yeah born in Greece. He was previously at Lazio, um, and and I said to you off air when I looked at this, I was like, 
surely we're not going to get the Lazio goalkeeper who's played 23 games last season. I'll just zoom that in so people can see. But <laughs> if you look, it's actually the 21-22. So, so where was he last season then, Andre? And, and, and what? Yeah, exactly. We need, yeah. we, need, we need to get a little bit of context in, in this one because if you look at the stats, of course, you see that he's played basically... Uh, for for six seasons, apart from one when they got Pepperina as the first uh, choice when they were in the Champions League, and uh, got far, as far as the round of sixteen when they were knocked out by Bayern Munich, by Bayern Munich. Uh, how do we get how do we get a, a keeper that has played a six season at Lazio? He, he transferred to Brentford. He, he moved to Brentford last season, but mm-hmm. uh, of course he didn't. Uh, you know. Uh, Play. Did he? Is he transferred there then, or on loan, bro? Is he actually transferred there? Transferred. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Because okay. he, he, he even let the his contract run out at Lazio in order to find a move to to England. Okay. And uh, he was really good, honestly. He at Lazio, he was really good because he basically his story is that his father was a goalkeeper too. Fotos okay. Rakosha was the the Albanian national team goalkeeper back in the eighties and the nineties. He was born in Athens, actually, because uh, his father was playing for Olympiacos there. And, uh, yeah, so he grew up in Athens, played for Panionios at the academy, then transferred to the academy to the youth team of Lazio. And they had some injuries in the goalkeeper position. So after a season on Luna Salernitana, he found himself, himself as a, found himself an opportunity, you know. He, 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 they, they didn't have another goalkeeper available, so they were forced to play him. And he stayed in the position for four seasons before uh, spending a season on the bench when Varena came. But I think he's very good. So it's a waste for him staying at Benford right now, especially now that they have uh, still, still have Raya at this, me- at this minute. But even if, even if they sell Raya, they, they have just booked Flecken for Freiburg. So he okay. won't start. Mm-hmm. He won't start. And he's a it's quite because I was just going to ask because there is a lot of interest in David Raya, but it looks like yeah. quite a few clubs are priced out of it. I know Manchester United might have looked and maybe even Spurs, but they've gone down a different route. So, yeah. either way, though, you're saying even if Raya was sold, this new keeper they brought in would be number one anyway, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Flecken is a good keeper and uh, plays for Holland now, too. Uh, Freiburg, they had the two good seasons, you know, for qualifying for Europe, and but. In, in, in the last two seasons at uh, in the Bundesliga, he's been a, one of the top keepers in in the league. So moving to Brentford, uh, I, I think they, they 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 brought him in, considering him as the successor of, of Raya. But yeah. Raya is still there because of course their price tag is still like maybe like Farke said, maybe Raya will leave uh, when, when Farke talk about uh, the um, towards the end of the transfer window, you know, when there's opportunity for players to leave oh, and yeah, when the, yeah. the price lowers, yeah. you know. I think the, the price for Laia will lower and someone will yeah. take him then. So they'll have Flecken and Strakosha as a backup. But if I were him, honestly, or Brentford, you know, you can keep a player like him because he's a good player, you know. He was, uh, when he was in Serie A, actually, uh, in 2021-2022, the one that we saw, whether we see here, he he was the, um, he, he kept a clean sheet for basically um uh, it was no 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 2019 2020 he was the third in terms of clean sheet okay he, he kept so 11 it, clean sheets you can see yeah you can see team. here 11 clean sheets 10 clean yeah, sheets exactly. 11 clean sheets and that's when you finish like fifth fourth so he's he's got great mm-hmm. experience at the top level right yeah 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 exactly and uh, he's good between the sticks uh, good with good with his feet. Of course, his um, weakness may be the fact on, um, that when when there's opportunities by corners or long balls. But uh, you know, I think between the sticks is a uh, is an assurance. Is an assurance. Uh, otherwise, you won't play f- five seasons as the number one choice for Lazio. Honestly, because the, there's a great addition of keepers there. Um, of course, when they. When they when they played the Champions League, they had Rain and decided to play Reina, but then Reina left after one season and Strakosha became again the number one choice. Then it, it was his choice to to leave, and they brought in Provedel. But uh, yeah, Strakosha, uh, looking at the fact that he's closed at Brentford, um, he, he needs to play because, of course, right now uh, with the um, Albania in the qualifiers, it's still a, a the still competition for the starting spot between him and Etit Berisha. Because Berisha is the captain, is is a veteran. He doesn't play anymore week in and week out. 
but uh, he's still playing because he's the captain. And Strakosha is the upcoming one, of course. So he's 28 years old, so he, he doesn't have to wait any longer. Yeah, so he, yeah. he, will, he will need to go and play. And this will be a top choice and one of the top keepers in the championship for me. Mm. will be a no-brainer too. Yeah. Do you so? Uh, do you know how much? Oh, so he's trans. He ran his um, contract down. You yep. said right. Yeah. Um, I'm just going to check transfer mark just to see what 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 it looks like. I mean, even not, alone, even alone. Yeah, yeah. Can be a possibility. No, that's a good point. Yeah, mm. that is a good Says point, mate. Three point five million. Is yeah, that value? He's lower oh, down yeah. now. Yeah, he's lower down yeah. because of the season alone. Right. Okay. Who who would be your preferred option, uh, Lockie, out out of the two? Out of the two, see, I don't know much about this guy. No, that's the thing. Really, but neither. I take Andreas' word for it. And if you're yeah. starting for Lazio year after year, you're clearly a solid keeper, and you've got a lot of potential. And yeah, I think it's one of them things, isn't it? You go for the trusted, the the guaranteed solid keeper in in Dal, or you go for someone who has yeah. clearly got pedigree in Europe, but has had a bit of an off year. Uh-huh. Maybe maybe there's that risk aspect, but I think. If he is as good as uh, Andre says he is, I think it's worth taking that risk without mm. doubt. Um, because again, yeah, if you get a keeper in the championship that's good, you've, you're halfway there. In my opinion, yeah. I think it's a big role in the championship. He's a good keeper. Yeah, yeah. They, they were asking in the chat about his contract at Brentford. I just checked 2026, so it could be it could be available on loan. You know, mm. I think yeah, it could be sure. available on loan. Uh, that's it, isn't it? Even if even if it's a loan, he's the type of play play you could probably keep wanting the Premier League, right? Is that good? Yeah, yeah, he's good. Yeah, he's good. With Darlo, uh, he's he's question, playing in the Europa, it? Europa, Europa League. He's playing in the Europa yeah, League exactly, too for, yeah. for for this season, so it's good. Uh, he needs to, to kick again his career because you know he just played once basically in the FL Cup in the League Cup. Right. I'm just looking here as well. According to Capology, you can see there he's only on around about twenty five grand a week as well. Um, and when you look, he's got like you say a four year deal, so it could be an option for for Leeds United. I think um, we'd be looking to pay similarly around the same in terms of wages for for uh, Darlow. I've seen mentioned around about twenty five. So um, it'll be interesting to see. I think. Listen. Being the uncultured man I am, I would still rather go for for Darlow just because he he. This is just my personal pre- preference, just because he he has experience being at Newcastle and winning the division and stuff. And um, but that's just my my preference. But um, like you say, we'll we'll have to wait and see um, which mm. what happens with the with the goalkeeping positions. We're now gonna gonna move on to uh, the defenders. Um, we've got a special look at um, two fullbacks and. Uh, and a centre back, but Andrea, do you just want to have a, like um, a mention of some of the players, some of the defenders that we that we've uh, yeah. we've touched on? Yeah, we we will we will be discussing of course because we need we know that the, the position we need to strength strength the most is the left back position. Yeah, especially yeah. if if Fear believes to there were rumours of, of him sticking around, but I don't think that's the case. Hopefully, because I, I don't rate him in, his, in the system of Farke, honestly. Yeah. So I think we need at least two left backs. To be fair, mm-hmm. especially if uh, Stuart Dallas will be will be returning to play in midfield and not as a fullback again. Mm-hmm. So, uh, of course, the position that we need to spend in my point of view is the left back position, the centre back position, and the right back position. We're covered because we have Drame and Ailing, but uh, you know, Drame, in my point of view, can can be transformed into a football a fullback, honestly. That that can be this possibility. So if we need, if if we're looking at because uh, Farke used to have uh, uh, players that uh, used to play sometimes in, as in, inverted on the wings, you know, and uh, in that case, you know, you need one that because uh, Drame when he goes when he plays in his favored um, flank, you know, on the right, he used to cross, 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 cross. If you if you try him on the left, he's forced to go central, you know, to, to the central road. So I, I think we, we can develop him in that in, in that way. So looking at the players, I'm gonna mention the name that we discussed. Of course, we we're gonna focus specifically on the, on these players, on this on, on these three, uh, which uh, who are Ryan Manning, of course, free agent Joe Roden and Danny McNamara. But uh, looking at the extended list, the famous Jericho list. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> you just made the list. <laughs> <don't make> the <laughs> list. Yeah, the left backs, of course, Ryan Manning. Uh, Ludwig Augustinsson has played uh, at some Villa, and, but didn't didn't get a chance to to really break into the team. Played for Sevilla in the past because of his age, because he's over 30, I think. 
So it can be a, at this stage in his career when he just wants to settle. I think he's good. A Swedish international played this season, started at Villa, then moved to Mallorca. Mm-hmm. Uh, Lee Buchanan used to play at Derby. You may remember him. He was really considered a prospect back in the day when he was at Derby. Then in, he's moved to Werder Bremen. I think it'd be difficult, but uh, you know, uh, there, there's other oh, there's other examples of players playing in the Bundesliga moving to to the Championship, <laughs> like Oliver Burke last season, for example. Another one who played really really well, I think, for for Boro, Ryan Giles, mm-hmm. who was who was returned to Wolves and it could be available on loan. And always uh, also from the loan market from Man City, Josh Wilson Esbrand. For Forrest, I think I've forgotten one, really forgotten one, because it was really good for Reading. Then moved to Bayern Munich and played a bunch of games for them. Omar Richards didn't play for Forrest this season, basically, because of the congestion in their position. I think it's good, good one. See Young, too. Right? Mm. And then, then there's, there's the other option. This one are options of young players. The experienced players, you know, that haven't broken into, the te- into their teams, like Max Law from Sheffield United or Ari Toffolo from Nottingham Forest. Thoff led a good season. I can't hear you, Joe. Sorry, no, I was going to, when you mentioned Forrest, I was going to throw forward Toffolo because obviously he, a bit like Louis O'Brien, he didn't, I don't think he even got registered in the end, did he, Toffolo? No, he played a bunch of games, I think. Oh, did he? Then then he he was frozen out, basically, because they brought in multiple, Uh, uh, ran on low, the surgery, a lot of players. Mm -hmm. Then these two, of course, Toffolo had a good season in the championship with, with Huddersfield. Then, then, then we go to the you know European ones or younger ones. So to the European ones, I think from Brighton, Mikhail Karbovnik, Polish one, played on loan at Olympiakos and then Fortuna Dusseldorf. And the Zweite Bundesliga, the second tier of, of German football, is similar to the Championship. One, one seventy-five meters of, of eight is a very versatile player. Can play in midfield, right back, left back. It's fast. Uh, it can be a good option. Same opportunity, Liberato Capcace, Empoli. Another good one. Didn't play a lot of games this season at Empoli because Parisi was ahead of him, of course. Also from Serie A, Emanuele Valeri, uh, but he will be difficult. Cremonese, this, this will be a really good player. It will, it, will, it will be an Italian international one day. Trust me, mm. this one. Who was that, sorry? Emanuele Valeri, Cremonese. Right, okay. First season in Serie A is a, is a good, very good season. Uh, it's a product of Atalanta uh, Academy. But now they've been relegated to Serie B, so there may be offers from Serie A too. Another one that I mentioned in the past, Greg Taylor, you know him, of course, because uh, he's at Celtic and uh, uh, in Scottish International too. I think he's a good player, honestly. Type of player that might shoot the system. Because, of course, he's not that tall, but uh, he's fast and he's good on the defensive end too. And uh, if you look at another a similar profile, I think Dennis Cherkin from Sunderland or Cameron Pring from Bristol. Then Leif Davis, of course, is always one that's talked about, but I don't know, honestly. He's had a good season at Ipswich, at Ipswich but in the Championship, I don't know if he's ready for a club like Leeds. You know, he's had a very good season for Ipswich, but I don't know if he's as clicked, you know, in that specific position. Then to, 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 end, to end this, uh, another one, Emmanuel Longelo, Birmingham City, really similar to, you know, another player, but he plays on the right, Brook Norton Coffee, so he's powerful. He can shoot uh, from, from Birmingham City. Uh, then I mentioned a few from, from abroad, you know, especially Fredrik Bjorken plays at Bodo Glimt. He didn't have a good loan in Feyenoord, but, um, you know, there were a lot of players calling out for Kjetil Knudsen uh, when there were uh, the, 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 the names, you know, yeah. from the possible manager. Bodo yeah. Glimt play a very similar style of play compared to the one of Farke. And Bjorken is good in my, in my point of view. Bjorken is, is, is really good. Of course, a final he didn't have a chance really. They they played six they, they played him for, for six games and they didn't really give him a chance. Um but he's good. He's also an Norwegian international. Similar players to him are uh David Jurasek from um, the Czech Republic International, Slavia Pra, if uh, yeah, Slavia Pra, yeah. Good crossing. These are different players. You know, there's, there's players that I mentioned that are good in going forward one on one. There's other players that are good with the crossing. Others that are, are, are more balanced, like Danny McNamara that we talked about late. We'll talk about later. And yeah, Luis could be also a good one yeah. because he's already worked with Farke. And yeah, the last name, the last three names that I will drop are Robert Ljubicic, very good player, versatile. In midfield, plays uh, as a left back, plays in midfield too. He's an offensive player, 
transformed by Dinamo Zagreb into a left back. So this could be a, 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 a lower, a cheap, a cheap signing too. Uh, the last two, two Andrei Borza, 17 years old, 17 years old, Farul Constanza, they won the league. And this one, I, I, I watched a few clips of him. Honestly, he's really good, this one. This one is really good. And, uh, you know, it reminded me of uh, young Max Arons, you know, if you look uh, at the type of player. Uh, yeah, th this one. But of course, we we will focus mainly on Manning and then Namal. Then we will, when we will talk about the centre backs, I will go through the the other names. Yes. Uh, otherwise, it'll, it'll be too long right now to to mention all the other centre backs. You know, don't want to annoy people now. <laughs> Listen, honestly, I uh, just really appreciate all the work you've gone uh, to to put it together, mate. And I know uh, everyone else watching is as well. And um, mm -hmm. so, thank you, thank you for taking your time to do that. So, so we'll start. We'll start with Ryan Manning. Then, um, yep. you know, we were we were linked to Ryan Manning. Um, it's gone very, very quiet, um, and I think a lot of that is. Can you hear my dogs? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sorry, they're, they're so... a little. Eleven and little. Yeah, I have the, I have the cat uh, standing next to me. Right <laughs> um, boys, boys, shh, please, shh, thank you. Um, so yeah, um, Ryan Manning, it's gone very quiet, and and maybe that is because Leeds United are close to doing it, and it's just a case of the waiting for the AFL ratification. But let's uh, let's share Ryan Manning's uh, numbers because they they're just so impressive. Um, you know, if we look here. Um, where he compares to to you know uh, players in his position, you can see in terms of goal and uh, goal creating actions, goals, mm. assists, etc. In terms of the attacking side of the game, there ain't many better at this level. I don't think. Well, based on his most previous season, he was at QPR prior to that, but but at Swansea, he's, he's had a fantastic season, and you can see. Um, you know, here, like Dale said, he basically was a was a was a was a cheat code last season. I think he had 15 goal involvements in in in, um, wow. in all, and you can look even yep. like his passes attempted as well. It's right up there. And I don't know off the top of my head where did Swansea finish. Does anyone does anyone know? Roughly? Middle, really, didn't they? There you go, yeah, around middle. middle. So, yeah. so if they if they're finishing mid table, and this is the kind of numbers he's putting up, what would you do in a team that's at the top end of the league? You know, so. Yeah. It's that there is impressive. Like Lockie, when you see that, it's mm. uh, Graham says, "Can I zoom in?" Yeah, sorry. Uh, so you can see that there. Um, but what what do you think when you see that? It's impressive, right? Oh, it, it is very impressive. Don't get me wrong. There's just <laughs> there's one thing I've I've, I've looked at with Fark's fullbacks, and it's very interesting because they don't actually get a lot of goals and assists. They're involved in the build up a lot and the positioning and the way they run, but he, he doesn't do a lot of crosses. He doesn't work like that. He uses them more as to overlook, to use as an overload. So actually having recovery speed, being quick fit, being able to defend as a minimum is probably something that's quite important for a fullback in that fact system as well. Because obviously once, well, if they're getting up all the time, they have to get back. Um, so is Ryan Manning, is, I don't know if he's got that in him. Um, I, we'll have to ask the Swansea if I'd imagine. Mm. But it, obviously in terms of like shot creating actions, that'll be big to actually create those chances, uh, goal creating and all that. I think that is big. But yeah, it's an interesting one with facts because I was looking at Jamal Lewis, I was looking at uh, Max Aarons when, we when they were there and they didn't actually create a lot of assists, which you okay. think maybe they did because obviously they have the players like the Buendias and that who would go inside and create all that. But they are a big part of the build-up though. So it's, it's, it's an interesting role for yep. the fact side. But obviously, if you can get Ryan Manning on a free transfer, it's an absolute no-brainer. He's, yeah. he's the best fullback in the Championship arguably the last season. There's him. I had Jamal Lewis as well. I think that would be a good one if we could prize him from uh, from uh, Newcastle, my brain. Mm. I think that's just yeah. a solid option. Who knows? Fark. There's also a wild card, out, and it's a guy called Mauro Jr. Um, from PSV. He used to be an attacking midfielder, but it's been transferred into a left-back. Um, and he didn't play much this season, so his stock's gone down a bit. But last year, he was really good. So he's one, potentially, that I'd quite like. Really good going forward, good recovery speed, quite quick. So for me, you know, there's a lot of options in a FARC system when it comes to a fullback. But the main core aspect is they have to be fit. They have to be able to get up and down positionally. They have to be aware. And yeah, obviously, getting goals and assists massively helps. But mainly, it's it's those running stats which are very big. 
Do you know what I what what I have just done there, just in the mm-hmm. uh, just while you were chatting there, is actually had a look at. So this is Max Aaron's in the season of twenty 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 one in the championship. Uh, so season, that, yeah. yeah, so that's the promotion season where I think they got like ninety seven points, and, yeah. and 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 you can see that flip really there because yeah. okay, the progression stuff, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. He's goal scoring. They're still up there. Like if you look, they're ninety five. Yeah. Nowhere comparable to Ryan Manning, but if you look at this section here in terms mm-hmm. of, like you said, progressive carries, progressive, yeah. touches in the attacking penalty box, it's much more involved to say like that. Yeah. It coincides with what you're saying in the build-up phase, as a, as as opposed to actually being the man that's cre- creating as such, right? Mm-hmm. And that's another one on the right back as well was Joe Scally. Um, yeah. I know Chris told me from um, um, a Leeds in America podcast. Uh, he mentioned him, and he's the right back. And last when um, Fat was at Brush Munch and Gladback, he got no goals and assists, but played every single game. So again, he was a huge part of that that um, that system. But again, yeah, it was, he didn't get the numbers, but the progressive stuff and the defending stuff was decent. So yeah, it's it's, it's, a, it's an odd role for a fullback, really, but it's an interesting one. Yeah, and I guess I guess Daniel Farker will, will know what he needs, and and we'll, yeah. we'll we'll move on to the next one because it is it is such a uh, stark. Yeah, just just just, on, one, just, yeah. just add one thing, you know, a pass completion fifty two percent. I analyzed oh. that specifically. Ninety percent of those are short passes. Eighty percent medium. So specifically, both to the like we said, you know, contribution yeah. in terms of not just. Of course, assist and uh, uh, of course the um, the front time. office likes like that, you know. Um, but medium passes, you know, passes to the the strikers, to the wingers. Um, medium passes are, 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 are that specific category, you know. And the forty two percent of those are long passes. He made two point sixty three. Uh, the the medium is of crucial passes per game. So it's almost three crucial passes creating an opportunity to score per game. Yeah, from from a left back. Mm-hmm. That, that's a good a good a good, uh, a good start in my in yeah. my opinion. They, they're almost like they're the the build when they go out wide. They're the build up, and then when they get around the box, they're the kind of the assist of the assist. You know, that's what yeah. their kind of role yeah. is to give it to mm-hmm. the players, who then give it to the striker, for example, or something mm-hmm. like that. But they need to be good on the ball. Pre assist, yeah, pre assist, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I, I like him. You know, it's because he overlaps. Uh, of course, he's yeah, more yeah. balanced. He's good on the town on. On the, you know, he's also at a percentage of sixty-one percent win uh, rate in standing tackles, too. So that's good too. It, it shows yeah. a, a place that is balanced on the defensive end too. You know, he reminded me actually. He reminds me of a more physical Stuart Dallas in a certain mm. way. If you look yeah. at his style of play, but, I get that vibe. Yeah. Jim, J- Jamie mentioned um, you know having having left backs with different attributes, and we're yeah. going to move on yeah. uh, to to another fullback now. Um, yeah. And he's <laughs> when you actually look at his graph, <laughs> it's it's just <laughs> like if we could bet. So it's Dan McNamara currently at, at Millwall that you've that you've mentioned, um, and you can see just how different that that is. Um, yeah, yeah, and 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 like you said, he's a different player. So in which way is he different, mate? And why why would you would you um, show him as a potential uh, signature for Legion United? Well, because um, I think, like uh, Jamie said, you need two different types of players, you know, one that can attack and one that can defend, you know. For example, if you look on the right, of course, McNamara plays mainly on the on the right, but I think he, he can be adapted on the other side too because he's, he's not like the offensive player, you know. He has a lot of time. He's like a, war, a workhorse, you know. He, he, doesn't, he's, he never stops running, you know. He needs to develop still on on his defensive game on his offensive game, but on the defensive side he, he, he is very good. I think he's very good. Of course, sometimes he just gets the habit of getting the yellow card. He needs to to you know temper a bit his uh, aggression, his uh, his passion on the pitch. You know, but like like we said, you know, we have on the right drama was more offensive, and Ailing was of course. Especially in the in the last two season after he had some injuries, because he used to be more offensive under Bielsa, more like a defensive player. So you need players with different characteristics and opportunity. I think McNamara is a fullback. Of course, he's, he played mainly on the right with Millwall. But if you look at his side, of course, you see that he's a more defensive player. I think you need one too, because he is not that you know 
type of player that goes one on one, that crosses. Is more like a war or a, a a workhorse, you know, one that goes and presses uh, and presses. I is is a off the ball player, a player that helps the team a lot off the ball. So he presses high, he, he helps with the double team, you know. Sometimes he is a positioning player. And you need one like that. He's very mm-hmm. praised at Milwaukee because he, he shows commitment, and he he, he he has no fear basically. He, he goes into the. He, he, he always tackles. He always. He, he's a hard player, you know, in terms of uh, of of commitment on the defensive end. And I like a type of player like that, you know, because I think you need one that, of course, is not too offensive, but can give you assurances on the defensive end. Uh, that can, uh, you know, uh, give you opportunities to um, to press high, to recover the ball, because of course. Uh, the t- type of system that Faki uses, of course, is on position, ball bo- possession base. But when you don't have the ball, you go and press orient- with oriented pressing. And a player like McNamara can be really useful in oriented pressing because if he recovers the ball, you- if you see the progressive passes here, mm. uh, these are almost all short passes. If he goes out as a, as a fullback and recovers the ball, you-, you can give the ball right to the wingers or the number 10. The number ten, the the object of uh, of, of lucky recent video, you know. Uh, so I think a type of player can be can be a type of player like him can be really useful in that specific position, you know. Mm-hmm. I'll, sure. I'll also add to that as well. People saying it's poor. I understand it looks poor, but again, you yeah. you got to take into account the system that they played. Yeah. So, for example, if it, the assist is low or the progressive passes, it might not be any options. You know, there might not there might be one option. It might be a difficult option. So it makes the stats look worse. So it's also important to take in systems into account. That is a huge part of what stats look like, really. Yeah, mm. for the system, exactly. If yeah. you look at the stats, you, you of course we expect offensive fullback, but you need to have alternatives on uh, on the in the squad. You know, <laughs> this season we had we basically didn't have alternatives after after. Even after Ayoski left, and Ayoski wasn't a left back, he was an adapted left back. Mm. So we were forced to play uh, Yelda, we were forced to play Strauk. These, these are not uh, left backs, of course, but we were forced to play them in that position because we didn't want to to get uh, battered sometimes, you know, mm. in, in specific games. But uh, yeah, um, I think, you know, we, we don't ju- just just don't have to look at offensive players, but we need different no, kind no. of players too. Yeah. That's why I mentioned him, you know. Yeah, and I think and, and I he's think, an Irish international too right now. Also, yeah, and we know like, you have like the, Manning. You uh, also, you're a fan also. of the uh, of the Irish national team, yeah. right, mate, <laughs> for sure. Um, I think as well. I think um, uh, Jamie uh, made a good point about like Zinchenko and um, and Tini being different different types of players, and they're both left backs at, at Arsenal. So it's right. It's it's nice to have. Um, you know different different options, but um, I think I think if we if we set our stall out, this one looks the most likely and is probably the most exciting mm-hmm. for us in Ryan yeah. Manning. So so hopefully we can um, yeah look to 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 them. Um, we're going to look at centre backs now. Now this uh, I guess this is up for for um, contention really because we don't know how many we're going to have. Right, we've got Max Volber. We think Max Volber's going to stay. There's no noise about him leaving. But again, I come back to what uh, Farker said about it's going right to the wire. And I think someone, if he's still at the football club when the transfer window ends, they might put an offer in. Okay, Someone might take a chance. Cooper will stay. Creswell will stay if the club want him to. I hope they do. Um, You know, what's going to happen with Strouk? We don't know yet. We've got... um, Leo Hjelda, I think Hjelda will be sold personally. Um, so again, it's clear the club want one because they've they've touched on uh, Nat Phillips, and I know um, I don't think uh, I don't think Andre is a big fan. We're not we're not going to focus in on 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 Nat, Nat Phillips. Phillips. But yeah, yeah. He's um, he's someone that the club have have, have clearly looked at. Um, It'd be good for the system, but yeah. Personally, not a big fan. Of yeah. his, you know. Um, but the one that you you have brought forward um, currently at, at Spurs and has played uh, internationally for for Wales, and I think he was at Swansea before he moved to yeah. to to Spurs. Is uh, 
Joe Road on, mate, and, and it's probably likely that he's going to be available. Spurs are making signings hand over, hand over fist at the minute. They've been linked to quite a few new players. There's obviously a switch up from Postacoglu. Um, and listen, Joe Rodon's well down the pecking order there. So so talk to me about Joe, Joe, Joe Rodon, mate. Yeah, just like Sarkosha, basically, we have to look at the fact that since he joined Spurs, he just played 50 times for them yeah. in two seasons and just eight times from, uh, from the start. You know, They sent him out on loan this season to Ren, and he played 16 times for them in the war yeah. season. So many times he was on the bench. Okay. So, is he ready for that level right now? I don't know. Honestly, yeah. it'd be good for him to have a season on loan or um, with, with the opportunity looking at at his age, you know. He, yeah. He's still not that old and not that young too. He's 25, he's in the middle. Yeah. So, maybe, um, I think he might be a similar profile compared to to um, to Phillips, but Rodon would definitely be my preferred choice because... Uh, He's good with the ball. He's physically tall, you know. He's a typical centre back of Fark. If you look at Grant Hanley at Zimmerman at closing uh, when when he was at Norwich, or even Elvedi at Gladbach. Uh, but I like Rudon because he is tall, he's strong, can play with, uh, can play from the back. We've seen him play for for Wales too. I think he played pretty well for them, honestly. Looking at, it's definitely been an improvement looking at, at, at the past defenders that they had with Ashley Williams and uh, John Collins. I think is an improvement compared to them when they were at Euro 2016. Mm-hmm. Uh, after they, they retired, you know, they, they brought him in, him, Rodeman, Chris Metham. So if you look at, 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 at specific stats, you know, he made basically 60 passes per game and the majority was towards a trend, toward the, the, towards the midfielder. So they were vertical passes, not horizontal passes. And, and that is crucial because, yeah. as Logie said it before, you know, the old midfielder coming from coming back to get the ball, it, yeah. it, it speeds up the, the, the build-up. And I think this is a good, a, good, a good thing, you know. He made basically, like we said, he made 60 passes. 40, 40, 40 of them were, were, were towards the midfielders at Ren. So this is a good one. 74 touches per game at Ren too. 93% of varial duels won. So, uh, I think 89% completion, you know, of uh, of the passes here is uh, 85. But basically, you know, I think that he's, he's a top championship player if we get him. Top championship player. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, think... So, maybe he will be on loan because uh, if we look I at... How, uh, I wonder how much he's... Uh, he can't have long... I think he can't have long to go at Spurs. I think, like Jamie said, he was signed by um, by Mourinho, weren't he? Yeah. At Spurs. Yeah. Let me have a look, just on. Uh, yeah, 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 just just c- check. C- Apology. Let's, let's have a look. Oh, he'll, he'll actually be showing on um, in in France if he spent time on loan there. Let me just uh, have a look at what. Um, yeah, but the con- the contract is still twenty twenty five, so there's still two two years left. Two years, enough. right? So okay, it's not it's not that long. It's not that long. No. You, you can you can even try to get him on loan with a, a, a option to buy, especially Absolutely. if we go to the option to buy if we get promoted. You know, promoted, yeah. Close, yeah. You know? yeah. So, I think it'd be a a, um, a a decent shout for sure. Would you prefer him over someone like Nat Phillips, who we have been linked to all day long? <laughs> yeah, I, I like I like I like Rodon. I think what I've seen of him more, more, mainly for Wales, to be honest. I think he's always yeah. looked quite solid. Uh, the pass completion there is. 89.1%, that's really good. Yeah. I think anywhere above kind of 85, 86, especially when you look at the passes attempted as well, and you know most of them are forward, that is very important for this system. Aerial duels one is always good. Um, but for me, the, the hard thing about a FARC system is balancing attributes at centre-back because the different way you play out, one centre-back will have to be good at driving out with the ball if the press is high and that's the only option. Another centre back will have to be that kind of ball playing centre back. So you have one centre back who is okay on the ball, who can give mm-hmm. it to the ball playing centre back, who then can, you know, will that be Rod on, for example, who can pass it forward. Then you have one centre back who can drive out with the ball, yeah. um, create space, and then give it to the full back or the wingers. So he clearly fits the ball playing centre back mold by the looks of these stats and what I've seen of him. And um, yeah, I'd, I'd like this one. I think it'd really work if he's married up with the other attributes that he doesn't have, if that makes sense. Mm. Yeah, Joe Rodon. 
Joe Rodon. Um, obviously, what I do, I do want to touch on because Jamie continuously, <laughs> continuously mentions him. So I think it's only fair we we do that because uh, Jamie's a, a regular watcher and a big big advocate of the show. So big up Jamie. Um, he's mentioned. Andrew uh, Omar Bedelli. Obviously, we've we've not done any he's sort of research list. on that. Well, oh, he's in yeah. the list, is That's he? Yeah, there, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. uh, we'll we'll talk talk to me about him then, um, Lockie. Talk to me about him, mate. What what excites you? Um, when we played Norwich in the Premier League and we battered them, but he scored Nedder, and I thought I still think you're absolutely solid in that game. And since then, I thought this guy's this guy's decent, and I watched a bit of him in the Championship. And and again, look at the pass completion, yeah. the carries. You see, that's the carries I'm talking about. That's what you need yeah. a centre back to, and he's quick, he's athletic. So look at them green stats there, and the carries and the progression. Yeah. You marry that up with either like a, a Creswell or a Cooper, for example, and it's a mm. it's a really good pair. And he's young still, you know. But then my only worry is I, I think there might be some prem team sniffing around him all. Serie A too. Yeah, yeah, all, 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 all over the Milan. country. Yeah, yeah. Right. he's really highly rated, I believe, isn't he? So he would not come cheap either. But that type of, you see the progression there, um, that is one type of centre-back you really need in the system, for sure. Mm, yeah, he'd mm. be brilliant. Or a player like him would be brilliant. Yeah, yeah. Uh, maybe maybe Farke Farke can play a part here. Yeah. But yeah. It, 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 we will need to spend a lot of money to, to, yeah, to, to, to get him. To get him and uh, especially with the, with a view to to get promoted, you know, like, uh, for example, it will be a move like... Um, you know, I, I don't like personally the player, but to, just to make a comparison, when Minx moved to to Villa, you know, they mm-hmm. have to, you know, that th- that type of move. But uh, yeah, it, w- it would be very good. It was in the list actually, the extended one. You know, we take a look at that at that yeah. later, maybe. I did. Yeah, I did. Yeah. yeah so yeah. I just checked transfer marked and uh, his his valuations actually uh, quite quite low six million but like jim said there um apparently that uh, Stuart weber said they turned down a 20 million pound bid for him so do we feel how, that it, how long's his contractor um just give me one second and i'll uh i'll tell you mate um let's have a look leave that alone marco <laughs> i've just dropped my vape and he's straight over to <laughs> uh marco um one second because he'll chew it he'll chew out leave it <laughs> Um, <laughs> sorry, uh, I'm just having a look for you now. He has got four year, four years still left on his deal, so they've obviously protected his value yeah. there. He's only on around about twelve grand a week, according to this. But the fact he's on a four year deal, 2026, he, they're going to want big money, right? Yeah, it'll be a real, real tough yeah. on that. Yeah, yeah. Um, but there's other defenders of that profile that you could scout yeah. as well. But uh-huh. a, yeah. a guy like that would. Re- I look at someone like I know he might not be ready yet, but I think. Jeremiah Mullen for Leeds, yeah, really good in that sense yeah. playing out from the yeah. back. I think he's still got growing to do, but mm-hmm. a player yeah, like so. that would be really good. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, the the, sure. the 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 other ones basically that I I I I had put in the list are Tanganga for from Tottenham from, too yeah, from Spurs. Was, yeah, yeah, because he it will be like, available as well. Someone like Tanganga, won't he? He'll yeah. be available That'd now. Be I think. So. Yeah, I think I think so. Also, Trusty, he played he played he, he had a good season. I think at Birmingham, but Arsenal Arsenal. Uh, I'm not keeping. I'm not keeping him. In, despite he's, he's he's brought into the the US national team, then someone mentioned him, of course, Jakob Grimm from from Hull. My one of my favorites, Callum Doyle from Man City on loan, but yeah. probably Leicester will get him. Yeah. Uh, um, other ones, you know, Luke McNally when he was a commentary, honestly, I think with the ball on his feet, he was good. In the, but he, they played, he, especially in in the final. Um, I think the formation might not suit him, honestly. It's better with a three at the back. Then Ballard, of course, from uh, Sunderland, uh, a similar profile to to Roden and Phillips. Another one that I like, Tom Holmes, relegated with Reading. Of course, will, 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 do I see him as a starter? No, right now, for a, a club challenging for a promotion. And that's the type of player that might be good from as a backup. And one that usually, um, honestly, I think he is very, very good. Looking at his age, just 20 years old, Ronnie Edwards from Peterborough. 20, oh. 34 appearances in 2021, 2022, and 40 last season. And I, I, I've watched him. I've um, seen some specific uh, clips of two, especially. I really, I think this one is really suited and tailored 
<laughs> for Farkas style of play. What what mold does he play? Is he like the quicker centre back? Yeah, center? he's tall and physical, but uh, if you look if you look yeah. at him with uh, the ball on his feet, he's uh, also one commanding player. You know, one okay. that can make a central run and pass it. So okay. he's really yeah. he's still very young. There there were interest from Chelsea reportedly back in the day, but it, it, it's not rumored again. So I think. Uh, right now, at the minute, so um, I think a, ch- a championship club might 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 be looking at him honestly. Then just uh, to finish this up, Adam Mashovic from Bochum can be a good one and similar profile to Carter Vickers of uh, of Celtic. Del Del Fry, another similar one. Uh, Jack Henry is is one that uh, I think uh, people are overlooking because uh, of course he didn't have a good start of the season at Cremonese and returned to Club Brugge, but if you look at him when he plays with Scotland, he's uh, tall, physical. Um, I like him. I really like look the like the look of him. You know when he when he plays. Another one strong from League One this time. Eran Cashin, Irish Derby County. And looking from abroad, the names that I made are Reece Oxford. He's now yeah. in the Bundesliga since yeah. years, but he's he, he, the guy who was at West Ham, right? Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah. But he's struggling. He broke you know. on the scene when he was like 17. Yeah, I, yeah, I remember. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he's versatile because he used to play. He used to start as a midfielder when he was when he break, broke broke through at West Ham. Yeah. So the, he was like a versatile player, you know, putting the strength between the two lines, you know, between midfield and and defense. But another one with Erdogan Berlin relegated, Martin Dardai, defender, tall, similar profile to 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 Rodon too. Uh, two other similar profiles, Davidovic from. Um, Verona and Wisniewski from Spezia, and uh, Vitik from Sparta Pra, uh, Atsidiakos AZ Alkmar, Greek defender, uh, is like a unit basically. And uh, the, the, the last two names, the last three names are Becca Bango from Swansea, but I, mm. I, I'm a bit of a mix with him, honestly, because okay. uh, he's, he's been good. mentioned in the chat as well, yeah. Kabango. Ah, okay, okay. Because uh, he's physical, but with the ball, sometimes uh, I don't like mm, his, his decision making, honestly. Uh, and the last two are uh, basically Rezzos. He used to play, he had a long spell with uh, Sheffield United. Now he's Olympiacos. He's versed. I can play left back, center back, and right back. Okay. And little, the last one, Connie De Winter from Juventus. He was another temporary, had a good season. And he's another versatile one, tall, but can play on, on, on the positions, you know, in, in the defense, basically. Mm. Loads of names, loads of names, a lot of uh, a lot yeah. of names there, and a lot of homework for people if they if they want to uh, want to look in yeah. uh, into it. Uh, listen, folks, we're um, it's now ten to one. Check us out. <laughs> <laughs> Late night leads, though. I think it. I think um, you know the the fact that people are watching is amazing. So thank you for that. And I know there's people watching it opposite ends of the world as well which this will be a nice time for them to get into it so so it's all cool um great show really really uh enjoyed that thank you um both for for your input we will be back tomorrow um i finish um i actually finish at uh, quarter past 10 tomorrow so we'll be earlier will be earlier and i'm working from home so i don't have to travel home etc so so we'll uh we'll get straight in uh and like lou, lou lead says as well not gonna lie that flew by it did i can't believe we've actually done an hour and three minutes yeah. it was really yeah. really uh really really interesting uh and we got loads from it um and Obviously, tomorrow we'll be looking at midfielders. So uh, if you're watching this on the replay or you want to leave a comment, put some midfielders in there. And if we've got time, we'll we'll certainly look at them. Probably Andre has already got them on his list anyway, to be fair. But just, just, just put them in. <laughs> um, Lucky, what's going on on your channel, mate? Before we go, do you want to? Uh, wanna yeah, we've just done. A, we're just going to number ten. Who's going to be on number ten? The best fit. So there'll be a few of them names tomorrow on this. Um, that's it. Go watch that video. I really enjoyed it. it. Took a while to make. Doing loads of research on who would best fit our system in number ten. I'm doing a loan video on how I think the loan players from last year will get on this year. Nice. Uh, yeah, some more breakdowns and hopefully some player profiles once we get linked coming up. Yeah. Great stuff, great stuff. Make sure you keep it, um, you know, um, uh, locked to uh, the Locky leads, and of course, uh, myself and Andrea and Locky actually uh, will be uh, will be back tomorrow uh, for uh, the second episode of the Scouting Report, where we'll be looking at midfielders, folks. Thanks everyone for tuning in. I know it's late. I'm gonna go walk the dogs and then get my head down, um, and we'll see you tomorrow. I'll probably be live during the day, provided there's something to chat about. If not, I'll find someone. I'll find someone. <laughs> 